Rich from Oklahoma. Uh, I'm going to give an update uh, on the boat. Uh, sorry for the late of uh, getting videos online and updating as as I would like to do more often and will be continuing here to be more often. But uh, yeah, we had a little small uh, health issue going on the past four months in and out of the hospital um, then about uh, five weeks ago I was in a hospital for five days but um, I'm better now I believe and uh, the doctors seem to think that we're somewhat back into control so uh, I've got the okay to go ahead and continue on with whatever I do in life so uh, past three weeks or so I've been working on the boat and then uh, did some shop cleanup and stuff like that. I just thought maybe I was getting a little carried away. So if you don't know already, if this is the first time you watch this video, this is a 1961 Glass Magic. It's a Cougar model. 14 foot long. Totally out of fiberglass. The company that made it uh, went out of business in 1961. Uh, I've looked online for this boat, and uh, I've only found two uh, in a video. Mine, this one right here, and another one in a video in general um, that is just a part of the videos of uh, vintage boats. Um, so I thought it was pretty cool to find these. Someone else had one. Uh, the difference was on his... Like all this trim work that goes right here. There's some trim that goes here. All of his stuff is gone. I'm not sure if he was just trying to go for the sleek look. He didn't have the windshield. Um, I don't know if he was just trying something different. Or maybe he just didn't have all those pieces. Well, I'm kind of fortunate. I've got all those pieces. So it's kind of worked out for me. When I first got the boat, the whole entire interior, including the, including the transom, was melted and laying in the bottom of the boat. You'll you'll see the previous videos. It was pretty wild. And um, so my update uh, for today is, uh, I just want to show what I've done with the transom. I want to talk about what I did and maybe in the future for someone else that's looking to what to do is maybe, maybe do a little different. And I think if I'd have had looked up some more information on there. I think I might have done things maybe, you know, a little bit different. Uh, first thing is, is, what I did was I took um, the back of the boat back here. I wanted to leave the, the existing part of the boat itself uh, intact. I didn't want to open up the back of the boat. I just felt that was just way more work to do. You would see in the previous videos that the back is still there. So I decided to go with cutting a slot out, roughly three and a half inches all the way across the back, and creating a slot. So when I took my uh, plywood, uh, I encapsulated the plywood once I bound them together using the PL glue. Once I bound them together, then I was able to slide it down into this slot. Now, one of the differences uh, that I created was, I believe from the factory, this originally was just one piece all the way across. So I kind of figured that uh, in order to give the boat a little more strength and integrity, I went on ahead and cut this hump in and grounded down these corners. And I'm sorry I don't have any pictures or videos of that. I, I may have pictures, but we'll see if I can add this to this video clip. Um, so I actually made that piece of wood be like a quarter inch from the fiberglass. So when I went to go put it back into place, dropped it down inside the slot, I wouldn't really have that much filling to do um, of uh, fiberglass. I wouldn't have had a whole lot to do. Um, to fill in all the, the extra big gaps and all that kind of stuff. So once I did all of that on the, on the outside of here, then I went to the inside, went on to the inside, 
and then put a six inch, three inches this way, three inches down, like a, a tab. I don't know what you, I'm not sure. That, listen, I'm not a boat guy, okay? First of all, I want to make that very clear. I'm not a fiberglass person. I, I, I'm only doing this, this type of work because I watch a bunch of videos. So some of my terminology as far as what things are, I could be absolutely wrong. You don't need to give me a big old negative over it because I, I just don't know. So I'm, it's just a learning curve for me and I'm doing the best I can for what I do. Now I do have some mechanical knowledge, no big deal. I work with it um, and I try to help other people by showing them my mistakes because I promise you I've made a ton of mistakes, especially on the fiberglass. Okay, so back to business. So I made these little three inch deals of fiberglass of this type of material right here and then resined it up on the inside so that it would bond from the inside of here to the transom on the inside all the way around the whole entire transom. So that way um, it would encapsulate the wood bound or bind all of the, the wood to the boat itself. So now things I would have done if I had done a little more research and if you're watching this video you're either interested in more research or you're just interested in a boat so in the future if you have a boat like this that has this cowl I'm not sure what you would call this but if you have this big of a cow and it's roughly from here to here about 32 inches so there's not a really a lot of space underneath to do a lot of work. I had to do a lot of work on my back, on my shoulder, um, and all that kind of stuff. So that being said, what would I've done to do differently to use less material, achieve the same goals, less work? Now, I watched a guy in this situation. I watched a guy. Now remember, I got this trim here. There's trim pieces that go here. So you really don't want to disturb any of this because this all looks really good. If I had realized a smarter way to go was take, uh, realizing this is a cap, is cut a line, come all the way down to here to the rub line, cut this cap off, come all the way around. Now remember, I didn't have a transom. There was no wood. There was no nothing inside of here. Come all the way around. Cut all the way across the back. Come on over here. Come back to this line right here. Continue to cut. Make sure you come past your design in the in the fiberglass. Come up to here. Recut straight across, go up and over and down. And then take the whole entire back cap off. I think in the long run of all, that would have been a much easier. It would have been less material in uh, resin. It would have been not as costly as it has been to make this repair as far as resin goes. So that being said, that would have probably been a different route I would have gone if I've just done a little more research. So if you're thinking about doing something like this to a vintage boat and you can do fiberglass work or if you're just trying it out, I would try that avenue instead of creating some type of a slot to drop that down inside there. In the long run, with this, if this whole cap would have been off, cowl or whatever you want to call it, if it was up and out of the way, I could have worked just like down like this. I could have put the transom in. I could have done, it would have been a whole lot easier, I promise you. It would have been a whole lot easier all day long. So, um, on to other stuff. My ideas. Oh, oh, one little note. The reason that the shakiness now in the video is there might be an issue I don't know yet because I haven't posted yet is because that died <laughs> so I'm using an old cell phone to record all of this and um, I hope the video turns out okay now you may have noticed is um, got a battery sitting here I got some weights over there well here's what's happened when it was sitting on the trailer the uh, it put a bunch of, uh, it, it pushed this up 
it made it be pushed up. So basically in the beginning, see if I can get this good shot here. In the beginning, this wood right here, sitting right here, when I was to make this level and go like that to make it level, this piece right here was touching the bottom of the of the wood. In other words, it was bowed up. Well, we have been having some hot summer days here. And I've been kind of fortunate to set this battery inside of here. I've set some weights. It's not that bad over there, but it's pretty bad over here. Um, it has actually made the boat relax by removing the trailer to outside. And let me show you what I did. After the transom was repaired, I went to my corner pieces right here and put them right on the, the corners right there. So that way all that weight would be on the corners and not damaging any more of the boat. Okay. And I also do that in the front. Let me go around front. So you can see what I did there. And I did the same thing right here. Two by four right there to give it support. I made a weld that little angle iron right there. So that way it would support the middle of the boat. So I have three points of interest making contact to the front. So when I get in and out of the boat, oh, and also I put a wire across there so that way you know, it don't, it don't pull apart if I'm getting in and out of the boat. Now I've leveled the boat um, as far as uh, the outside the interior. So I think I'm good to go there. So hence when I did that, basically the whole interior dropped down easily, easily two inches. So I think that's going to make the underneath part of it when it makes contact in water trying to go, it doesn't create a like a pocket underneath the boat, which I believe would actually slow down the boat because this would not be condored and pushed down in order as you're going, you know, across the water. Where if you had a pocket here, I think it would actually make the nose, it would make the nose dive um, all the time because you have a, you would have air under here instead of having water sliding or having a boat sliding across the water. So I'm very happy that all of this is dropping back into place. Now, that being said, with all this weight and everything being pushed down, I am going to put in, and again, I'm not sure of all the terminology, so bear with me, is I think they call this a center dagger that would go here. I had to grind it out because there was nothing left of it. So with all this weight and stuff on here, I'm going to put the center dagger in, and then I'm going to put in the cross piece that would have gone here so that way when it all when all the resin dries up it will dry in this position just like this so I think that'll work out pretty good right there but um, yeah it's just it's uh, it's been a little bit of work these past three weeks have been quite interesting and uh, and all that kind of stuff Oh, and everything you want to notice is no hole. There's a hole. For those who know, there should be a hole there. There should be. Um, I'm not doing that. And here's why. I know the boat is old, and I know it's supposed to have a cable-type system steering. That's great. That's all well and fine. I plan to keep the boat for a very long time. And I don't believe I need to be that nostalgic with the boat as far as keeping the steering into a cable system. I'd like to have a, at least one thing that would be current and also make sure that the boat would still be safe in the long run of it all. Um, so I found another boat at a what we call a boat wrecking yard around here. And I took the rack and pinion steering out of it and it has one big long cable that goes underneath the here and then it's going to pop out. I will have a video on that and it will pop out to come out there to come out to the motor. And it's just on one side because I do plan to put a hidden light system and a hidden stereo system inside of the boat. So that being said, I don't need to have a bunch of cables running around and getting tied up in my wires.